I'm cutting the foam board for the roof. The ceiling insulation is going to be a layer of uh, reflective bubble wrap kind of stuff and this foam board and then we're going to come in later and fill in the gaps with uh, a, kind of a spray foam that comes out of a aerosol can. To cover the length of the roof it takes one full length sheet of this plus one that I've cut down right here with my uh, blacksmith forged um, bone handle knife that I got in Kia for about 15 bucks about 10 years ago. These are the ones we didn't do. And these are the ones that we did do but that aren't quite done yet. You can't see it here but above this is the reflective bubble wrap with the reflective side pointing up. And here we're starting in on just a little bit of the frame. I've got these four bolts in the upper left there that were made by some sort of structure that was in here long ago in the first iteration of this van. And I'm going to use those to attach um, part of the wall frame. But before I start, I've got to get out one of my construction pencils and sharpen it with a knife. So I'm using my woodworking knife to uh, crudely sharpen a construction pencil. And now I'm using my woodworking knife again. I really can't stress how valuable this thing has been. But now I'm using it as a You're chisel. To chisel out a gap where the aluminum um, wall frame that's in, or wall reinforcements that are already in the van will fit. I don't want to take those out because they do uh, increase the structural integrity of the van. Plus, taking them out would leave many, many, many holes in the walls. And they're only, you know, uh, they only stick out about a centimeter. So, I'm just going to keep them in there and, and deal with them. We might end up actually being able to mount something to them. These bolts in the wall um, go all the way through and on the outside of the van they're just the rounded um, metal little caps, like mushroom caps. about to realize here that the drill bit I bought to make the reliefs that the washers and nuts are supposed to fit into on the board are too small. I have a 30 millimeter drill bit and the washers are around 33 millimeters in diameter. We've run into a lot of problems like that where I've guesstimated the size of something when I was at the home improvement store and it ended up being wrong, necessitating yet another trip to the home improvement store. This is kind of the point where I realized I need to make a jig if I want to make accurate, accurate cuts with this skill saw because you just can't get really good cuts at least not woodworking grade. At least I can't. I'm sure that somebody more experienced in construction can do fine. Cut off five centimeters, decided that wasn't enough. Taking off another centimeter. Again, I'm guesstimating here. As this project continues, I will gradually begin to realize that these guesstimates are going to cause me more work in the long run than they save me in the short term. This is just kind of a proof of concept for the wall. I wanted to put up just one board to see what it was going to look like and to kind of have it there as an example. I highly recommend 
getting really organized with your tools if you're going to be in a project like this because we spend probably a third of our time looking for some tool that we need because we're not consistent about putting them back in the same place every time. I even tried wearing a tool belt at one point and tool belts only work if you remember to put the tools back in the tool belt instead of setting them down somewhere and forgetting about where they are. I think this is the fifth or sixth time I've had to take this board down, bring it out, trim it down to size, and reinstall. Here I am just taking off the diameter of the saw blade. During this process, I've been converting my brain from English to metric measurements. Now we're going to get into the sound insulation and insulating the wheel wells. Kind of doing some last minute checks there in the back and now we're putting in a one centimeter self adhesive foam around the wheel wells and this acts as a thermal and sound dampener. There's some bolts sticking out of the wheel well there that I've got to uh, shave down even with the nuts so that they're not sticking out through the foam. I'm kind of glad that the wheel wells in this are almost um, just cubes. Makes them a lot easier to build around. I don't feel like there's as much wasted space there. Now in a previous episode you saw how I painted the underside or the outside of the wheel wells with the rubberized goop paint which waterproofed them from the outside and also provides some sound dampening from gravel and just protects the steel. I think this is about uh, maybe two millimeter thick steel that uh, the wheel wells are made out of and the floor itself. Just finishing up the sound insulation on that wheel well, reattaching a brace, and Natalia is going to come through and put some non-functional insulation tape just to clear up the edges and uh, get rid of any air gaps in there. Closing down an air gap is pretty critical when you're doing insulation and we'll be doing that uh, later on the ceiling as well. I do a much better job on the second wheel well here. This is obviously my first time doing this as uh, pretty much every step of this project is my first time
doing whatever it is that I'm doing for that stage of the project. But this one turned out a little bit neater. I don't know if it's entirely visible at uh, this level of zoom. I've learned that it is easier to just cut it down to size on the spot instead of taking it out to the workbench to cut it down based on measurements. tape up this uh, second wheel well here. Teamwork makes the dream work. And now it is time to get to work insulating the floor, starting off with these two little recessions in the back of the floor that I'm not sure what they're for, but I put down a layer of the reflective bubble tape and then this five centimeter white styrofoam with another one centimeter square of the sound insulation just because it fit and I wanted it to be kind of tight in there. And then this black tarp, which is a two or three millimeter thick uh, sound and water barrier that's gonna go as the initial insulation on the floor. <laughs> 